Like the title of the video says, we're going to be making a tier list for Evil Dead the game. This is as of the AOD slash Castle Kandar patch, so a lot has changed. Um, for one, they nerfed pretty much all of the guns in the game, so that pretty much puts a big, uh, big nerf bat to all the hunters. Um, on top of that, they normalized all of the healers' ranges, so all of them heal with shimps and amulets from the same range. And they also removed a number of bugs slash exploits. They nerfed demon early game, and all of this kind of wrapped up together is going to change the meta. Um, now, it doesn't change the meta too much, but it does kind of shift things around and it reprioritizes certain things. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is I don't have an F tier. I don't think anybody actually belongs in the F tier. Um, nobody is completely useless. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the person that kind of almost is, um, and that's Arthur. Now, Arthur, before the patch, had a bug with his melee aura, and that granted him range damage bonus as well. So his melee aura was also a range damage aura. Um, this made him kind of okay, but since they removed it, he's just outright worse now than he was before, and he was already one of the worst characters in the game. So yeah, he's pretty useless now. He increases melee damage, which is kind of, sort of okay, into a double warrior comp, but in general, it's way better to run Annie for balance bar damage, or even just running a Hunter for better boss killing or something else it basically almost anything else um basically arthur would really only beat out into double warrior comp he would only beat out like a second healer and like i don't even know if he does that so in any case he's just not very good he doesn't bring a lot to the table melee damage increases just aren't super important because warriors either balance bar things extremely fast or they kill them in one heavy attack anyway so yeah it, it's kind of pointless for arthur um with his current build his current setup um, moving into c tier we have scotty now a lot of people they they like subscribe to the church of scotty scotty number one etc it's it's he's just not as good as pretty much almost any other character he's one of the worst characters um he is serviceable you can use him you definitely can use him um, he doesn't have the defense of the other warriors um, building him full dps is not really an excuse because you can build the other warriors full dps and they're going to be better at it henry will be tankier by far and aod will not only be tankier but he'll have higher damage output as well so in general scotty's just not very good um a lot of people think he's good because they get into the scoreboard and they have farmed a bunch of overkill damage and they do a lot of chip damage with their aoe thing that doesn't really help doesn't hit any break points it doesn't help kill anything it just farms scoreboard points um so yeah scotty's not very good and the second that they add overkill damage or some sort of useless damage modifier you're gonna see scotty's kind of get checked a little bit because a lot of his damage output with the aoe stuff doesn't really help you do anything um that being said um they did buff his q now it does 150 damage instead of 100 damage this isn't enough to kill anything in the game um, the lowest HP that a mob has is 200, so it still isn't enough to one-shot anything, so that's kind of not great. Um, it does get buffed by auras, so if it gets buffed enough by an aura, then sure, I guess it could start one-shotting something. I haven't done the math, but it'd be, it'd be pretty close if it doesn't. Um, but then you'd have to run some sort of weird double leader comp around trying to make Scotty work, and that's just, that's just not a good idea in general. Um, so anyway, um, they also removed one of his bugs and probably one of his best bugs in that whenever you do a heavy attack and then you, right when you hit, you press Q, you'll cancel out of that animation and then you'll use your Q ability. Um, for whatever reason, this used to also use a heavy attack in front of you, um, at the same time. So you could actually perform two heavy attacks and a Q and about the time it would take you to do one and a half heavy attacks. So it's really, really strong. 
um, they've removed that. Um, the other thing that kind of changed his balance a little bit is the fact that puke canceling warlord is no longer a thing. So if you didn't know this, his Q will actually cancel the puke animation. So it would allow him to get out of that puke animation and start attacking again. So that was pretty nice. Um, but since warlord's not really a threat anymore, it's not important. Um, so moving on, we have Amanda. Now Amanda, um is the worst hunter now i used to put hunters all like a tier up just because hunters were so strong but hunters have had their stamina their dodging nerfed quite a bit and now guns have been nerfed quite a bit so i don't think hunters necessarily deserve that tier up that they did before i still think they're good and strong i just don't think hunters beat out every other class automatically um, they're still good. They're just not overpowered anymore um, That being said, they're still obviously good um, But Amanda has some problems with her kit her Q is very decent if you use it with the proper weapons That that being the boomstick and the double barrel a lot of people think the crossbow and the blunderbuss and things like that are good on her And it's just not true the reason being she does very well with things that have ammo restrictions so how many shots are in the magazine but she also has the ability to press her Q and keep firing and ignore that magazine limitation. Now things like the blunderbuss and the double barrel have very fast fire rates. So you can empty their magazines quickly but then you have to reload. Things like the blunderbuss and the crossbow have very slow fire rates. That means that even if you press Q, you can shoot and you can keep shooting but you're still going to have over a second between shots. This is not good for her Q ability. The boomstick can fire, I think, every 0.6 seconds or something. So you're going to be able to fire almost twice as fast, if not twice as fast, with a boomstick or something, and do the same or more damage with um, the shotgun variant. So just keep in mind her weapon selection, if you want to optimize, is very small. On top of that, her perks, her masteries and stuff, revolve around the pistol. Now, all guns took a nerf, but the pistol did too, and it was already one of the worst weapons in the game, and now it's even worse. So, her masteries are pretty trash, and her consecutive damage bonus is not too great either, so she definitely deserves her spot down here into the C tier. Now, next up, we're moving on to Cheryl. Now, Cheryl isn't terrible she's not terrible but she's the weakest healer now now the only thing that even made her compete with the other healers was the fact that she had ridiculous range and they did not now that's no longer true she's extremely dependent on having shimps in her hands if she doesn't it makes her very very weak if not outright useless she has the least amount of defense she doesn't really have any offense um she's just kind of okay um it's cheryl everybody knows how she works she's very straightforward she doesn't bring really anything to the table besides using shimps well and if you don't have shimps well she's kind of useless next up we have pablo and the only reason why pablo is even close to cheryl is because he has a bug now pablo is by far the most defensible he's the tankiest and he's very hard to detect <coughs> he's the He's just basically the best solo queue support, um, but he has a bug currently in the game where if he goes into the bleeding out state, he loses his camouflage. Um, without that bug, he would be into A tier, but because he loses his camo, he does kind of sit down here into B tier. Um, I would really like to put him up into A tier because I really like Pablo, but if you're not being careful and if you go down... It makes it very hard to do ninja plays later on because the demon can see you. Um, so the fact that his best and probably most important aspect gets removed on getting downed is the reason he's down here into B tier. Um, next up we have Kelly. And Kelly is actually super well balanced now. They fixed her, her bug where she would get range damage from her level 25 perk. Um, so now it only applies to melee damage. Um, she's just she's just decent now 
she's got good defense with her Q. She's got good offense with her bleeds. Both her bleeds are very good DPS. Um, you have to use a resource to use them um, with the dodge mechanics. So that's actually super well balanced as well. And then she has some melee stuff to help out early game. I think Kelly's in a fine place right now. I don't necessarily think she needs a buff or a nerf. Um, she's just pretty solid. Um, she's obviously not the best hunter by far, um, but you know, she, she's decent now. Um, next up we have the A tier. Now the A category has all of the ashes in it and I did not do this on purpose. This is just kind of how it worked out. Um, but let's go ahead and start off with Lash. Now Lash is probably the lowest A tier. Um, he does a bunch of stuff though. Um, his Q helps contribute to balance bar damage, which is always very good. He can knock shields out of, out of skeletons' hands with his Q, which is obviously super nice, especially early game, trying to get through those shields quickly and efficiently, not taking chip damage. Um, he lowers fear, which is super important. It's nice early game, but because the meta has shifted around early game possession spam into more of traps fears and possessions for power leveling think of his fear reduction as literally lowering the amount of xp that the demon is getting it's super super good if people build around it correctly it actually straight up neuters the possession and trap meta thing going on right now um, so lash can actually do some pretty cool stuff around that it does require some team coordination um, but beyond that, he also gives a damage buff to everybody, ranged included, which is very nice. Um, it's not super important, um, but he can also keep his Grande up very, very consistently. Whereas Arthur has a hard time keeping his Q ability up. El Jefe, just using Heavy Attack 1 on Chainsaws, can dismember legs very, very easily, keeping his Grande up very consistently. And that is a huge amount of damage and fear reduction constantly especially on objectives so he definitely be belongs up here in a tier a lot of people don't think he's very good and that's usually because they play against really bad leaders most people think leaders are bad because most people who play leader are just bad at the game but a good leader contributes a bunch to the team they're probably the hardest to understand they're the hardest to play um, but lash brings a lot of different things to the table literally something of everything um, next up we have Sash. Now Sash is also talking about misunderstood. A lot of people think Sash is not great. Um, he's the best healer by far. He has basically one of the few abilities to actually not use a resource but still heal with his heavy attacks. Um, if you're optimal with them, you can get them off very consistently in a game and yeah he just he brings a lot to the table he brings damage with his head marks which are actually better than before the patch um he lowers fear we've already talked about demons power leveling off of fear so he he brings everything to the table as well next up we have wash um or wash he's still really really good he took some nerfs a few patches ago still very very solid in every aspect he doesn't really have any weaknesses um, he's just not quite S tier anymore. And then finally we have Hash. Now Hash, I could see people putting him into S tier. His exorcism ability is stronger now than it ever has been because early game possession spam isn't really viable. And every exorcism that you get off is huge, especially against like puppeteers who are power possessing. It just basically neuters the demon entirely. So I could see people putting him up in, um into S tier very easily. Um, I'm kind of torn myself just because his shotgun perks aren't super great right now. Um, but that being said, his chest detection's all right as well. So if his other perks were a little bit stronger, I'd drop him into S tier, but he's kind of held back a little bit. And now I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit here because Henry, Henry, most of Henry's perks are kind of trash. They're not good. They don't have a lot of throughput. They kind of look interesting, but when you actually get down to the numbers, they don't really do much. But his Q ability is just this good. His Q ability is the reason he's here. He can clutch out so many situations so often. He can face tank enemies when he needs to face tank. He can resurrect people. He can revive people. He can play mind games. 
it's super super good he absolutely belongs in s tier i used to put him in b tier myself because you can kind of play around his q the problem is if the henry knows how to play he can force your hand he can force your possession he can force all kinds of things if he builds into fear reduction he can mitigate his weaknesses henry's super powerful he's a rock on the team um and he fits into you know really good comps so next up we have annie a lot of people don't think annie's very good um those people are wrong and i'm confused because they must have just not played her um her balance bar gives the ability especially early game for warriors to one hit or even two hit possess targets that's really really good and it actually does hit some break points when uh, the demon starts going into possession for the extra balance bar now. So being able to continue two hitting an enemy is important as opposed to three hitting. That's a lot of damage mitigation that you're getting off just by having an Annie on your team. So this is absolutely massive. If you have an Annie and a double warrior comp where you're running full balance bar and you both have white sledgehammers, you can instantly balance bar things again even with the balance bar upgrades from possession it's super super powerful and you can't really do it without annie anymore unless you have like double legendary sledgehammers or something and that's just not super likely um but even beyond that annie also brings a ton of damage herself um when she presses her q ability she basically becomes a hunter for damage huge huge amounts of damage she fits into every comp she she can go with a hunter she can go with a warrior she can go with double hunter she can go with double warrior it's it's she can she can go with triple leader um she's super powerful she enables a lot of stuff to happen um she's basically just walking around as like eight perk points or something or like 10 perk points it's crazy how much she brings to the table um so beyond Annie, let's go ahead and talk about Getly. And there probably should be an S plus tier or something. Um, but Getly is just broken right now, in my opinion. He's overpowered. Um, his collector ability affects chests and it affects enemy drops. I think these should be split out, honestly. I really do. Because he just brings too much to the table when they buff it. And that's, I think, intrinsically the problem with trying to buff the collector skill. Is that this ability is either unnoticeable, like I can't even tell if it's doing anything. Or if you notice it, it's completely overpowered. It's just there's legendaries everywhere. Everybody has at least a purple. You know, like you have like hunters walking around with like purple bats and sledgehammers and warriors running around with legendary guns it's it's mayhem and every enemy's dropping ammo or shimps or something his collector alone puts him into the s tier on top of that and this is the reason why he should be an s plus tier on top of that the fact that the meta has shifted to traps for fear and possession his trap removal is stronger than it has ever been even with the nerf to its cooldown it's more important than it has ever been his they're buffed to crossbows um to in general they just buffed how crossbow works they i shouldn't say buffed they cleaned up how it works so that the animation where you're actually looking down the uh, site lines up better um they made the projectile feel better i think it's a, a little bit faster now um but on top of that they also added the explosive crossbow and his mastery applies to all of that both both the explosive and the normal crossbow and they made it to where it affects the reload speed and the reload speed is 20 percent so if you tack on the 50 percent and the 20 percent you're at 70 percent reload speed with crossbows it's it's just really really good um so getly is just way stronger than he has been before not only because of like what they've added but kind of everything the meta shifting and the buffs and adding the the explosive and all of that stuff it just makes ed really 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 powerful um i'm foreseeing a nerf to him to be honest with you he's he's it's too much right now um but that being said this is my opinion this is my tier list if you guys disagree with anything let me know in the comment section below and thanks for watching